we're building engaging worship through singing in this class. Uh, Drew's done a lot of the, the groundwork, the foundational work. Uh, with that, all the, the book stuff, the nerdy stuff, right? Don't uh, be yes, we got that down, and, and, and why we sing, and some of the music basic, basics. So, uh, and I'm starting to jump into uh, singing in harmony is what we're working on. It's not just this week, but probably the next couple weeks, two, three weeks or so. Um, so that's, that's really, get, really or I really think it gets fun. And, uh, growing up, especially if you grew up in a Catholic church and, and singing more kind of in unison, in unison and battle and instruments, uh, I really found joy in, in coming to the Lord's church and singing in harmony. And, and what, what, what a beautiful way to use our God-given instruments to come together and, and use our uh, God-given talents and ranges and how it comes together and blends so nicely as Drew kind of showed us last week with, as we were singing together in chords. So... Uh, looking forward to, to doing that as we sing in harmony. So uh, some of the things that we'll cover today is what does it mean to sing in harmony? Uh, why do we sing in harmony? And how do we sing in harmony? It's kind of some of the, 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 the objectives today and where we're going to go, uh, not just this week, but uh, in, in the weeks to come. So um, what does it mean to sing in harmony? Uh, we can definitely actually just stand up here and talk and, and tell you what I think it means to sing in harmony, but... Uh, I love doing activities. I love getting the class involved in, in, in my in my profession. Um, so I hope you're ready to participate and get involved because I think that's more fun. So we're going to do a little activity to demonstrate. Uh, we're going to all sing a song that most of us know. We're going to sing Happy Birthday. What's the catch? We're all going to plug our ears and we're going to sing whenever you're ready. Close your ears, close your eyes. Wait, not yet! <laughs> because you might not know who you're singing to. Right? So, I just Googled somebody real quick. I need somebody to sing to. Quick Google search revealed that it's Ewan McGregor's birthday. If you don't know Ewan McGregor, if you follow Star Wars, uh, the, 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 old, the, the young Obi-Wan. Yeah, Obi -Wan. Uh, yeah, the young Obi-Wan. Um, yeah, I'm not Obi-Wan. Okay, yeah, yeah. Not, so that's, that's not, you pronounce his name Ewan. You would agree. So if you have no one to sing to. If it's anybody's birthday, that'd be really cool. By any chance, no, 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 anybody's birthday here. I, I didn't figure the odds were, were pretty unlikely. So um, we're gonna give that a go. And just because you're not gonna know what that sounds like, uh, I'm gonna record it so we can play it back. So that should be nice and fun. Yes. Here we go. And, and we're gonna be able to see this later. So um, I'm gonna I'm gonna eventually queue up. You close your eyes and and you go whenever you're ready. Oh no. Close your eyes, close your eyes, plug your ears, go. <laughs> I'm sorry, it sounded like a wet dog. <laughs> That's why we're having the class. Exactly, right? I'm <laughs> still working on it. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, you might be able to hear the people around you and build up the people around you. People who come in later are going to be like, what is going on? Women can hear way higher notes than men. <laughs> I didn't hear any of the low notes. So, so just so you're not caught off guard, I do have a speaker back there and a speaker over here. So, uh, hopefully it'll work. So, let's see how that sounded. Oh, no. Close your eyes, plug your ears, go. Happy birthday! Happy birthday! Happy birthday! That's all we got to do with the invitation. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, uh, how'd that go? Not yeah, yeah, it's not, it wasn't, wasn't real pleasant. That was, that was interesting, yes. Um, yeah, were we in harmony? No, definitely not. Uh, why not? What does it mean to sing in harmony? Why were we not in harmony? 
Okay. okay. We couldn't hear each other. We couldn't hear, hear each other. We didn't have a leader. We were singing different leader. things. We didn't have a leader. Yeah. If we were all singing the same song, I, I threw a different version. I, I threw, the, I threw the, 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 the depressing version of Happy Birthday in there to mix it up. Uh, what did you say, George? Different key. Different key. Yeah. Different tempos. Even from the very beginning, what happened? Didn't start. I didn't know yeah, when to start. Yeah, didn't know when to start. So we're starting at different times, singing different paces, different pitches. Yeah, some of us were high, some of us were low. Some of us were high, some of us were low. <laughs> Even like how you decide to maybe hold the last note and how long, right? Yeah. We were all soloing rather than singing as an ensemble. Yeah, we were all soloing instead of singing together. So singing in harmony, that's the opposite of what we just did, right? We were all kind of doing our own thing. Singing in harmony, we were trying to take all of our unique voices and talents abilities, bring them together and make it sound good. That's the whole, that's the point. We want, to, we want it to sound pleasant, right? We want it to be pleasing. Um, so what are, what are some elements that we that we need to make uh, harmony work? We mentioned some of those again. Tempo. Tempo. Tempos. Tempo. Tempo. Pitch. Leaders. Okay, yeah, a leader to help us start us. Same key. Same key. Um, so those dynamics, right? Are we... Happy birthday to you. How long are we going to hold that? Happy, right? Um, yeah, so there's there's very, 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 very many elements there, and even singing the same song also kind of helps there, too, as, as I, I threw kind of a curveball there. Um, so that's, yeah, that's what we're looking at, is, is how do we do this together? How do we how do we take, and, and we got, what, 15, 20 voices, maybe, uh, that, that same... Uh, how do we do that with 100, 150? Oh. Some congregations you go to 400, 350, 400, right? Um, so it, it takes takes some effort to do that. Um, so why do we sing in, in harmony? Uh, we talked the first week, week about why we sing. Do you guys remember what we some of the things we talked about that very first week? It's been a little while, a few weeks there. We opened up with with why we sing. A couple different elements. Review. Why? Why do we sing? Oh, it glorifies God. Glorifies God. The Bible tells us. The Bible tells us to. Yeah. We use our emotion. It's the most sensitive emotion we can. We use our emotion to kind of connect with each other, connect with God. I think that's memory too. We memorize things when we sing. Definitely. We yeah, uh, the kids and kids connection are doing their memory verse and memory verses. Yeah. Yeah. The, 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 uh, even even uh, Aaron was telling me his memory verse this morning, and Oakland was telling me her memory verse, and the boys made a made their own little song. They're a little jingle to help them with their memory verse so they can win their prize and everything this morning to get kids' connection. So, yeah, it helps, it helps to remember. Yeah. Uh, so, there's the kind of the biblical, the emotional implications. There's something else we talked about the first week on, yeah. on you know, all, all, all the nerdy stuff. Where, is, where, we, where do we say that? Yeah, just I mean, in terms like the, the a cappella, it's something that we see within Scripture, and it's also something that we see in the first century church, the early church. Um, so, mm -hmm. so, we get that as a historical element, too. And we're, 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 we're how about these musicians built this up and led, it, and led us to this. And uh, Drew's talked about the, the pentatonic scale and we build from that, so on yeah, and so can forth. Can I say and, something really yes. weird, too? Yes. So Depends on how weird, but well, go for it. you know, because we sing here at church and we have, we kind of have to learn this stuff kind of naturally from mm -hmm. the song leader, mm -hmm. there was somebody who was playing a joke and um, did their voice in AI and called me up. And I knew exactly who they were because I knew the tones and I knew the inflections from just singing here at church. Huh. It, it, you don't realize it, but I picked it up and I said, I know exactly who you are. Knock it off. And then... <laughs> They went back to their normal voice, but they were trying to play yeah. a joke on me, you know, yeah, prank it me. So it wasn't in their, it wasn't in their natural voice, but yeah, but it was AI. In their, but because you can talk in into the phone and, and well, mm -hmm. yeah, well, I heard the tones and I'm yeah. going, hey, this is this is why we see. <laughs> exactly. I figured it, you know, you could figure something out because we we sing so much and we learn this stuff even without doing it in a real class. I was able to figure out whose whose voice it was. Yeah, and, and how it how it naturally kind of binds us together. Yeah. As we sing. Yeah. Uh, we we got a, a really interesting video. I don't know if we're gonna get to that. I'm gonna really try to get to it today, but if not, we'll uh, look at it maybe next week. Um, that that goes right along with that. So uh, yeah, I'm glad you glad you said that. Uh, so last week we determined what a chord sounded like vocally. Uh, vocally. Uh, how how is that different than in unison? 
How is the chord a little bit different than in unison, we would say? Yes, sir? Uh, you sing at intervals. Okay, you sing at intervals. You guys remember that Remember that interval range that Drew talked about? What's, what, what, was our, what was our jumps to make the chord? Do you guys remember? Three and five. The three and five. So we've got kind of, kind of to make our scale, we've got whole, whole, half, or one, one, half, right? Whole, whole, half, whole, 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 half, right? So when we sing uh, that, that third and that fifth, as we're talking about, we're going our whole, whole, right? That third, and then our uh, half, whole, that next whole would be our, our fifth. So uh, how did that sound? In our chords when we did that together, if you were here, it sounded really good. It sounded nice, yeah. right? And that was just that was just one chord, right? Kind of one note that was built a couple notes on on it. And that was just one, right? We take these chords, we put them together, and, and form a song out of it, and it becomes something real beautiful, right? If we do it well, <laughs> which is what we're, what we're going to work on, right? Uh, if if we're, we're not real trained, I'm sure you've been there where uh, you've been in a congregation, and maybe there's not a real strong leader. Right, or uh, maybe there's there's a select uh, few in the audience, and maybe there's a few that are a little bit tone deaf, and, and sometimes it sounds like nails on a chalkboard. But then we can get into the whole concept of you know what, what's pleasing to God, but uh, obviously we want it pleasing unto us too. So it's something that we work at. Anything else? It's a skill that we work at. It's a skill that we think is important. Well, and um, real, real quick, bro, yeah. like going back to our happy birthday exercise. Do you think that Ewan McGregor was happy with, like, if he was here, would he feel honored with that? Because he's going to go watch it, of right? Course. He's, he's going to be on YouTube back to show. Him, yeah. but, like, no, I mean, if he was here, like, he's not he's not feeling honored by that exactly. in the same way. Like, you know, God wants us to be able to use our our voice to the best of our ability mm -hmm. um, to glorify him. And so there's, there, there's a spiritual application to trying to learn how to do this. Mm -hmm. Yep. And... and if you're not the you know the, the best singer, it's it's something that that uh, over time with anything else. Uh, uh, I was at one point definitely not the best tennis player. <laughs> Sent plenty of ball over the fence, but in, with training and practice and over and over again, uh, you, you get better at certain things. And and some people have to train a little bit harder than other people sometimes. So if it's something that's important to you, you work at it, right? And you're in a better the more you the more the better you do at it, the better you feel about it, the more you want to do it. The more you help others do it, yeah. And next thing you know, where we are a body, you know, that is that is growing and glorifying together. So, you know, it's like saying when you do service, don't you want? If I make a meal for somebody, don't I want it to be good? It's not a matter of just well, be happy. I could, no, don't you want it to be? Don't you, don't you want to get? So you want to do it again? Yep. yep. And so there's something all that. Exactly. And, and again, it's going back to the, this team approach. If, if you think about you know a sports team, if Nine, you know, nine of the ten guys are doing things really, really well, and the one guy's like, "Well, I showed up." Right? Uh, that, that that one guy could also cost the game. Um, so uh, it, it, it definitely can can the, the one person can make an impact, right? Um, yeah. So, how would you feel about singing only the soprano part of a song? Totally. Some of us <laughs> song leaders kind of have to do that, and sometimes it's rough to get up there, especially in the morning, uh, or only the alto part. Or only the tenor part, or only the bass part. Ladies, only sing the bass part today at some point. Get ready. How would you feel about that? Yeah. <clears throat> Just a thought. You know, I, um, I was thinking about your question, you know, why are we singing? Why, you know, it, it, if you think about, we were talking about this modern music, is there's an instrumental aspect to it. Mm -hmm. We are the instrument. Yep. I can be the bass. Mm -hmm. You know, if you, if you hear like a band, you've got a bass guitar, you've got a lead guitar, you've got percussion. We've got all that mm -hmm. in our music, in our acapella music. We've got all that. I could be the bass sound, someone's the, the lead sound. You know, and all that range together is just sounds great. And we we do it, it's just so much more encouraging. Yeah. Because you you want to hear that whole tonal range. Yeah. Just, it's why if you just listen to music and all you hear is the bass guitar, would you like that? Would you like to listen to that? Mm -hmm. No, I want to hear the everything here. Yeah, so we five bass guitars all playing and that's it. Yeah, or five or five <laughs> rhythm guitars. Yeah. You'd be like, well, where's the lead? Where's the bass? Where's yeah. And so we are all those instruments. Yep, yep. And it's fun during band practice to for the, the drummer to go try and tinker with bass and for the, the bass <laughs> yeah. to go try and jump on the, the drums. But when you go to do a performance, that's not where you're going to go. That's right. Right? Yeah. So you're, you're finding what, what, you're, what you're good at, where, you're, where you've been made for, right? And, and you're going to really hone on to that level and, and do that, that part really, really well. Uh, March Madness is going on, so you see guys that they have their roles, right? You've got guys that go and they they get go get rebounds, and you got the three point shooters, and you guys that got guys that might come in the game just to make a free throw at the end of the game to save the game. Um, so people have people have their parts. I don't know if that door is locked, but it looks like cool. Or they just like or they're contemplating. Do I really want to go to this? <laughs> Brian's teaching you. I don't know if I want to go in. 
Uh, yeah, so uh, we're gonna build off that on, on as we talk about uh, uh, why do we sing in harmony and and, and uh, how do we do so. Um, so last week, uh, really well timed. Um, David sang a. Uh, that didn't transition like I wanted to. So you all got the answer. Um, that, David sang a, sang, sang a song that I thought was a, a great intro, a great promotion to to uh, to harmony. Uh, anybody remember a song or read the board really fast on uh, what, what we sang that uh, demonstrated this this unison verse, uh, this kind of this, this singing in it as a chord or singing in parts. Yes. Every praise. Every praise. Good job. I don't know if you read it or you remember, but yeah, every praise kind of has a, a unique start to that song, right? Uh, we start off start off in unison, and then we break up into our our four part harmony, and then we sing together in unison. And we break up in our four part harmony again. So. Uh, just so we can kind of get an idea of what again what that sounds like, uh, we're going to see that here in our in our class today. So if you remember remember that song every praise, we're going to sing it real quick. And and if not, just just listen because we got the vocal track too. Uh, just listen to the difference and what that sounds like uh, in uh, in every praise. Every praise is to our God. Every word of worship with one accord. Every praise, every praise is to our God. Can you sing it? Sing hallelujah to our God. Glory hallelujah is to our God. Every praise, every praise is to our God. So you have some notes in the treble clef, and you have some notes in the bass clef, right? Um, so even though we're singing, there's two notes there, right? What do you, it's still it's the same. It's still, it's still a. It's same okay, it's the same note, note right? That's just not good yeah. So we got uh, an A up in the, in the treble clef, but we also have an A in the bass clef, right? As we as Drew talked talked about A flat, yeah. Um, so uh, you know our females females are singing up in their register, and, and the males are singing some in their register, but still singing the same note. That's why it sounds really similar, right? Yes, sir. Well, you can tell because the notes have two stems. Mm -hmm. So that means the two parts are singing the same note. Yep. And then if you look at the shapes, you'll see that the men and the women have the same shapes. So that indicates they're singing the same part of the scale. Yep. So we talked about before the uh, the, the, the different shapes of the notes, right, mean mean uh, different timings, right? Um, so we see that they, they look this visually the same. Uh, but we're eventually going to talk about shape notes a little bit. And you guys can see that. We've got some triangles, and then eventually it turns into some ovals, and we'll talk about what all those stand for and whatnot. But that tells us again that we're the same note, singing the same note there. So it sounds nice, sounds pleasant, right? But it really opens up whenever we got the next stanza, right? And we sing our parts. Yeah, the bases come you down, see, and, yep. and the sprouts come up and yep. separate. And we can talk a little bit about that. What do you notice in even in the kind of the, the chord structure of that? Kind of go back to a little, we might not know all the notes and everything, but even if you look at the shapes, do you notice anything? The shapes change. Okay, so the cha sh shapes change, right? Uh, if you look at the tenor and the bass part, what do you notice about those two? It's an octave apart. It's, it's an octave apart, and if you don't understand that, look at the, the shapes again, right? The shapes look the same, so we're singing the same note, but in uh, an octave higher or lower, depending on 
who you are. Yeah. So it sounds nice. Are we all singing the same note? No. 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 You got a little triangle and you got the little square. Um, so we're singing different parts to that chord, right? But we're kind of singing in our registers. So a little bit of background of, of kind of what's going on there. We'll talk about that more in the future. Um, but we see that that it opens up really opens up that. That, that singing, that chord, when we, when, we, when we sing it that way, instead of singing in unison, and we break it up. And, and you can get a feel of what that sounds like, right? Any questions, comments, concerns? We can definitely dive in deeper, but just as a, an introduction. Can, can we show the 135 on that? Sure. You want to do that? Because you're a lot better than, I, 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 than, than hey, me. I just got, so, so, what happened here, this, this went to D. Okay, so this wasn't, so can we go back a screen. Right. This is A, right? Everybody's he said this is A. Do I got A? And then when it goes to harmony, the note changed, the chord changed. It went to D flat. So what you have is the bass singing D. There's your one. And what's hap what notes are the soprano and alto singing? Soprano is still A flat. A flat. But it's the F and the A flat. That's the three and the five of D flat. So you know what we're saying about when if you take the three and five, you still got it. You almost, you almost made me go to my... Yeah, see, see how good so you've got one, three, five. The basses are singing the one. The basses are singing one. Alto's Alto is singing three. three and the spring is singing five. Mm -hmm. So you cut your one, three, five. Mm -hmm. You almost always have that. Yeah. And it may <clears throat> kind of switch up, right? Your, your bass may eventually jump to your five or your alto jump to your one yeah. or something. Yeah, yeah but you're, so you're singing somewhere within that chord usually. Yeah, you've got do, do me so right there. Yep, yep. That's what we did last week. <laughs> Yeah, so if that was over anybody's head, that was just bonus, so don't worry. Watch last year's video. Yeah, you watched last year's video. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so some things that we noticed, uh, again, about the unison parts, we, we tend to kind of see the same note, but maybe in the in the in different registers, in the treble clef, bass clef, right? Uh, what about the harmonic parts? We kind of see the same uh, kind of that chord structure, right, as we go. And if we go back, you can see that, um, you know, so for the bass, like bass, we, we hold this note, Whereas maybe the tenor, uh, the, uh, the tenor's not a good, not good. There we go. Uh, here we go. No, that's that's still holding it. I was trying to find a where we where we change here. Where uh, well, we can even just you can say as the the bass and the tenor are keeping theirs. Um, eventually, we've got some changes here in the altos and sopranos, right? Um, I didn't do a good job explaining that, but yeah, they're all I tried. They're following that three five. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so um, how do we then get to that? How do we sing in harmony, right? How do, I, how do I know me as a singer in the group? How do I know what to sing? How do I know what to sing? You have to know your range. Yeah, you have to know your range a little bit. You got to know what's comfortable for you, right? And that's the fun part of what we're going to do here in a second is figure out what we're comfortable with. Drew kind of made us, some of us really uncomfortable <laughs> last week because we went through our scales. Uh, we had some, some nails on the chalkboard moments uh, there. Uh, so there's typically four general classifications. There's definitely many, many more that you can dive deep into. Uh, but we, we know those, those parts, most of us. That, that highest part is the Soprano. Sopranos, right? The next highest is the oh, Alto. Gosh. The next one is the Tenors. Tenor. And the last one, the lowest one is the Bass. Basses, right? So there's definitely a, a larger range. Uh, basses uh, probably can sing a little bit outside that E2 to E4 window. Um, but is it, is it, is it pleasant? Is it comfortable? Right? Is it your, what we call it kind of your prima, prima bo, bo, boche or is it, is that how you pronounce it? Something like that. <laughs> prima boche, yeah. Uh, does it, does it sound, does it feel okay? Cause, uh, David demonstrated that he can hit the high note, but we don't want him singing <laughs> that note. Like he can get there, but that's not in his natural, uh, singing capacity. Right? So what we want to figure out is, is where's our, where, where, where's our comfort zone? Right, we're, we're, what feels good to sing in, and that's going to kind of place us in the in this soprano, alto, tenor, bass part. So we don't may not know all what, what this range is, um, and we can definitely test that, and I'll show you how in a little bit. But we're going to do a little activity to, to help us with that to make I it. I think it's also more important to remember, like most of us think soprano and altos, girls, tenor and bass are boys, but that's not always the case. Like mm -hmm. growing up, there was some tenors that were females, and there were some altos that were basses. So it's really where you're comfortable at in that range, not based off of uh, gender. Each voice is unique. We didn't plan that. Very nice. Each voice is unique, right? There's, there's plenty of overlaps. There's plenty of uh, exceptions uh, to the rules. This is kind of just uh, a, a general fitting. It typically, right, you're going to have your females. 
singing the soprano and alto. Typically, you're going to sing males singing the bass and uh, or the bass and tenor part, right? But yeah, you, there's different different exceptions to the rule. And we kind of even talked about uh, maybe in certain songs you feel more comfortable singing this part, but others you feel this part or how it's pitched and whatnot. No. In sixth grade, I was the first soprano. Yeah, <laughs> things change. Yes, and even as uh, as you get older, uh, things your your vocal cords change a little bit too. So yeah, that, that could change over time. There's times where I like singing the melody. I just like that song, just mm -hmm. whatever. I like singing this, you know. Yeah. Um, but it just I think it sounds the, the ensemble sounds better when the men are given that bass tone. Yeah, you know. Um, so, but at the end of the day, it is about praising. Right? Yep. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. I've, I've, at some point, Dennis Rodman was probably, oops, uh, Dennis Pro Rodman was probably uh, a little jealous of Steve Kerr that he got to shoot three ball at the time, but Dennis Rodman was a rebounder. <laughs> That's what he, his team needed needed to do, needed for him to do, right? Uh, so we can definitely get get selfish and, and say, you know, oh, you know, everybody said, oh, this is the, this is, Soprano's the coolest part, let's all sing Soprano. Well, there goes our, our there, there, there goes our harmony, right? Now, from time to time, if we switch up, yeah, uh, greatest commands, right? It's kind of fun to, to sing different parts at different times and or, or say, man, I'm, I'm really not hearing the tenor at this part. Well, that's not really where I'm natural, but I'm going to help the tenors out a little bit. So, yeah, being part of that team. Uh, again, your prima voce, uh, voce may be more helpful to know than your range. So that's your, kind of like your 12 to 18 notes that are in your comfort range. So there's definitely ways that you can test kind of where your range is. There's a lot of things on, on YouTube online. Uh, this was a, a video that I just found real quickly on, on finding your voice type and he, he kind of describes, uh, you know, your, your range for Supreme Voce and, and, and where, where you can find it feel comfortable. And he goes through a whole test. It's, it's, it's a good 15-minute video. You can find the, 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 the more uh, uh, popular section there. It takes you four or five minutes to kind of test that, that range and, and see where you're at and see where your, your natural range is. So uh, I encourage you maybe, if, if you're interested, if you don't know kind of where your range is, to, to jump online and, and look up something like this. I could always send you that link if you need to. Uh, we're going to uh, do this a little bit different. We're going to sing each part of a well-known song that most of us know, and then eventually sing this in harmony. Most of us know the song, Jesus Loves Me. Uh, a lot of times we sing that, that, that soprano part, or that, that, main, that main part of that song. Uh, but we're actually going to sing it in all four parts. So, uh, guys, we're going to try and get up there and sing the soprano part, and Ladies, we're going to eventually try to sing the bass part. If you can't uh, get all the way up to those, those notes or get all the way down, you can definitely, like we talked about, we can uh, drop an octave or, or raise it an octave if we need to. Uh, let's see if we can sing it kind of in that register. Sound good? Okay, mm -hmm. so we're going to start with our sopranos. And to help us out, we actually have the track that is just the soprano, so you can faintly hear everybody in the background. Uh, but we'll just hear the soprano part. Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong, they are weak, but he is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me, yes, Jesus loves me, yes, Jesus loves me. Jesus loves me, he who died, heaven's gate to open wide, he will wash away my sin, let his little child come in. Yes, Jesus loves me, yes, Jesus loves me, yes, Jesus loves me. So within that, I found my range. I could, I could, I could, yeah, I could get, I could get up here to that C, uh, and naturally, right, where it's supposed to be. Uh, if I want to sing that, I would definitely have to drop. So that's, that's kind of a challenge. Can you, can you sing with those notes where they're at? And that's that's going to be difficult for, uh, for some of us, right? So I am definitely not a soprano. If that felt comfortable for you, maybe that's your range, right? Uh, maybe if that was a little bit too high, maybe we're more in the alto range, so we'll try that. Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong, they are weak, but he is strong. Yes, Jesus 
Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. The Bible tells me so. Jesus loves me. He who died, heaven's gate to open wide. He will wash away my sin. Let his little child come in. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. The Bible tells me so. A little bit different. It kind of didn't sound like Jesus loves me, did it? That sounds awesome, though. Yeah. Okay, alto is awesome. Yeah. I mean, that, that is... <laughs> sounds like a different song, though, right? If you were to sing alto, yeah. you would have so much fun. Yeah, yeah. That's such a great tone. Um, yeah, it sounds different, though, right? And I probably should have pointed out the soprano part was the top part. I just kind of assume, again, if you guys have questions, that alto part was that part just underneath it. Um, we didn't talk about any of what those notes are, anything. Was everybody able to kind of pick up those notes, though? Did you, were you kind of able to follow the part as you go? Sort of, kind of. Yes, thumbs up. You're not, you're not, this is like I'm teaching my math class again. I don't know how many of them are. Were you able, were you able to kind of follow the notes though? Yeah. Even though that might, that, that's probably the, anybody that's the first time you've ever really heard that, that, that part of that song? Well, I was going to say, that's kind of goes back to what George was saying. Like we hear, we memorize it. And so mm -hmm. we've memorized mm -hmm. it in that. So you want to sing it? Or the the, you want to yeah, yeah. want to sing. So how were some of us then able to jump in and sing that part if we're so used to hearing the other part? Okay. So are you are we looking at that like oh I got a C coming up I got to sing my C is that how we're singing that? No, we no. It's going you know, down. It's like this. Well, how, how, how do you how do you know to sing that next note? Um, it's I mean I guess like sort of instinct. Just okay. Sounds, like sort of like. Well, first of all, you know it's going to go. Down. down, right? Do you know how much it's going to go down? One to make your third. <laughs> Ish. It's going to go down. It's well, it's yeah. Look at this. Look, look at it. Yeah. So, what's the what's the bass thing? The bass is the bass bass tone. What is that note? C. Yeah. It's a C. Let's not get too nerdy here, but yeah. Yeah, it's a yeah. C. So we're on the chord of C. Yeah. Now look at yes. What is the alto and soprano singing? What notes are they singing? E and G. What are those? Three five. Three five. Yep. One three five. But again, not even worry about the chord just yet. Just we're going from an E to a C. 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 So if you, okay, here we go. This is nice. <laughs> we're going from an E to a C. How much are we dropping? Two steps. Yeah, we're going two steps. Right. So you're kind of thinking, what is that? You start after you do this wall. You you kind of think of the. the you, you kind of train yourself on these intervals, right? I'm going to go down a step, two steps. And then I see, oh, I'm back up, two steps, right? Like and the next one's only? Half step. Yeah. <laughs> is it kind of like taking a break? Because, yeah, it's kinda, yeah, it's, you know, I, I've visited churches that mm -hmm. they do the organ and whatnot. But because we sing a cappella so much, even though we don't quite understand that, we naturally, mm -hmm. in our brain, oh. figure it out. Yeah. And do it. You train your brain about how much that distance is. Yeah, yeah. and we naturally, without even thinking about it, oh yeah, mm -hmm. we, we're going to have to drop yeah. down, and it looks like, and we don't even think that. We exactly. just kind of know it, because we've been doing it. It takes repetition, though. Ever since we've been going to church. Yeah. You know, so but even, again, some people haven't been going to church for a long, right? No, but so, they'll pick it up, mm -hmm, because yep. so much of us are doing it for them. Exactly, you with know? them. Oh, yeah. Yeah, there you go. With them. Yeah. yeah. Uh, how far is it to the door? Yeah. For me, how far is it for me to the door? 30 Ten steps. steps. Okay. <laughs> 10 steps? No. <laughs> how far is it from here to the door for me? All the way. 15 feet. 15 feet? Do I need to get a tape measure out and double check that, or can I say, yeah, that's, that looks about 15 feet? Right? Mm -hmm. My son, Kaysen, would have a really hard time with that. Right? He would have a really hard time because he doesn't really know what really a foot is or he hasn't had experience doing estimations or measuring. But most of us who have measured anything, we could say, I would say that's a pretty good estimation. Matter of fact, I put like a basketball hoop down or a free throw line and I, 
That looks like one better free throw. Fifteen feet. That's a good. I would say that's a good estimate. But we use our 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 experience. We use our practice that we've had in that to to be able to do that kind of estimation. So you kind of do the same thing here. We're kind of estimating that distance. How far is that? Right. We're going to see when we get to the base part. You got some bigger jumps. Right. Going from way up here to way down here. That takes some practice to get that interval down. Right. Um, or it helps to know that. An it's an octave, octave, right? Like we practiced last week, so that, that helps working on those intervals. So, uh, without me telling you too much, I'm going to say it's usable all the time. Uh, we can't leave the tenors out, right? <laughs> Ladies, this is where we're going to start getting dropped down. Wow. <clears throat> Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong, they are weak but he is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me, yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me, the Bible tells me so. Jesus loves me, he who died, heaven's gate to open wide. He will wash away my sin, let his little child come in. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. The Bible tells me so. Again, that kind of sounds a little different song. Might be the first time you've ever heard that that part of that song, right? Uh, anybody feel more comfortable in that range? Yeah, yeah. I felt most comfortable in that range so far. Got every all the guys were like, "I like that so far. That's best." Right? Uh, but that's not it, because then we can throw in our bases. <coughs> Good luck, ladies. Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong, they are weak, but he is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. The Bible tells me so. Jesus loves me, he who died. Heaven's gate to open wide. He will wash away my sin. Let his little child come in. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. The Bible tells me so. It's done that a little bit, huh? Yeah. So, out of curiosity, uh, sopranos. Where are our sopranos at? Who, who like that soprano range? Well, that's not good. Okay, there we go. Oh, there Maybe about four of you, okay. Uh, what about our altos? Where, how many of you guys felt a little more comfortable in that range, altos? No altos in here? Okay, we might have to nominate some altos then. Yeah, I can probably do it. Okay, so for this next activity, how about you two jump in that alto range if you can? Okay. I can kind of do uh, what about our uh, What about our tenors? We like that tenor range. No well, some of us are just gonna be, some of us are just gonna give it a go then. <laughs> I was gonna give we go. I might jump in there with you guys then. And then where, where's our bases at? We got quite a few bases. Okay, so we're gonna do that with all the parts. And uh, we got this track with those four parts now put together, so you can can kind of hear it if you lose it. So listen for your part, and let's see what it sounds like together. Probably sing the whole thing here. Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong, they are weak, but he is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me, yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me, the Bible tells me so. Jesus loves me, he who died, heaven's gate to open wide. He will wash 
wash away my sin, let his little child come in. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. The Bible tells me so. I don't know if you noticed, but I turned the track down there at the very end. I didn't even hear it. You didn't even notice, did you? That's how good we were. Yeah. Very nicely done. So now we now we get to the fun part. This is where we can get to start learning our parts and breaking up, and we can use nice tools like like this, where we can just plan things online. We can you can learn your sections, and uh, we, so we took this off the Praise and Harmony app, which anybody can get, by the way, uh, ten dollars a month, I believe. Uh, for the for the for the regular subscription, um, and you basically you got a whole library of songs. So if you're really wanting to learn some of the songs that we sing, that would be a great tool. Feel free to come see me. Uh, but that's what we're gonna look at going forward. So uh, do that do that vocal part, that vocal test. Uh, try and figure out kind of where your part is, and, and going forward, now we can start breaking up into parts and and seeing how does this all go together? How does this work? How does this fit? So sound good? Mm -hmm. This is where we really get, get get to have some fun. So can I make one comment? Yes. So if you go online to the Church of Christ, Southwest Church of Christ, mm -hmm. there was somebody that came into the church a couple of years ago, three, four years ago, and sat in the back to let the community, you know, mm -hmm. to review us. internet community to review us. Yeah, yeah. And they said they had heard the best vocal a cappella that they had heard in a long time. Now, this was years ago, right. and they said, I was sitting next to an alto, yeah, yeah. and it was wonderful to yeah. hear the harmony. Yeah. Now, other things they didn't say yes. so nice, because they're, you yeah. know, they want the outer world type of church. Yeah. But Anybody yeah. heard this, this song in, in its full parts for the first time like this? I mean, sometimes you sing this all kind of in unison. Does it sound a little bit different than we maybe sing it with the kids? Yeah, sounds a little bit different. So, uh, thank you guys for coming. It was fun, and uh, we'll keep going from here on out. And uh, look forward to work some, maybe maybe even sit together in our parts if we get enough of us. So, encourage more people to come, and and we'll build off this. Thank you guys.